For years, car manufacturers developed new automobiles that push the envelope of innovation, design, and technology. However, if you are not super rich, buying new cars every year could be quite expensive. Nevertheless, if you happen to be a successful entrepreneur, a celebrity, or a royal, the crazy genesis of this whole transaction and how we found this car starts off with this picture. Where price is of no consequence, you would likely be willing to spend millions of dollars as the people in these videos did on these classics. From Bugatti to Ferrari and so much more, 20 most expensive and rare cars of all time. <laughs> Terrestrial Shrub Rover If you're the type of driver to ride around in a solar-powered vehicle, you might as well make it really eco-friendly, literally. Enter the Terrestrial Shrub Rover, a solar-powered vehicle that looks, as you may have guessed, exactly like a large shrub. Made by Justin Scholl, it is a simple hedge at first glance, but it really is so much more, according to Scholl, in the spirit of NASA and its 2020 lunar expeditions in preparation for colonizing the moon. The terrestrial shrub rover represents the opportunity to explore terrestrial and social environments back on Earth, from within a manned, foliage-bedecked, solar-electric-powered rover. It goes without saying that if Scholl ever puts the rover on sale, many of us would be first in line. The Shrub Rover doesn't have a windshield. It does, however, have video screens and a control unit for the driver. And a second version currently under development will be remote controlled via webcam. Although it was created as an art project, the hilarious terrestrial Shrub Rover has unlimited pranking potential. Scholl, a Houston, Texas-based artist, was inspired to create the mobile hedge thanks in part to future space travel. Whatever the inspiration, we hope that Scholl will come around to use the terrestrial shrub rover for pranking purposes in the near future. I mean, how could you not? Duesenberg Model J Many great cars have been built across the world in the last 120 years, but the Duesenberg Model J is arguably the most important road car produced by the American auto industry which dominated the century of the automobile. Duesenberg Motor Company began in 1913 and had several successful models in the Model A and Model X, prior to the legendary Model J of 1928. Duesenberg also raced very successfully, winning both of the world's most important races, the French Grand Prix in 1921, and the Indianapolis 500 in 1924, 1925, and 1927. In 1926, the company was purchased by Wuderkind Eret Loben, or E.L. Cord, and preparations began for the Model J, a car that Cord's stated objective was to be the best in the world. The Duesenberg Model J was designed from the outset to become the world's best car, and was announced with great fanfare on December 1, 1928, at the New York Car Show. With the provenance of such significance, these cars will almost certainly vault straight into the auction records when they sell. With an official estimate of in excess of $10 million, the Duesenberg Model J is one of the most desirable American classic automobiles, with its exemplary performance, coachwork, and celebrity ownership. Ferrari 335S One of the rarest Ferraris in existence has become the most expensive car ever sold at auction. With a price tag of $36 million, adding to its rarity, only four of the 1957 Ferrari 335S were ever made. Auctioneers there compared it to Picasso's paintings or Rodin's sculptures. All pieces of Ferrari racing history are worth a premium, and heavily raced examples like this are unlike anything else in the world. It might be expensive, but in a few years, it'll probably seem like a bargain. Ferrari's workshop equipped the model with a 4.1-liter V12 engine, giving it a massive 400 horsepower and enabling it to reach a top speed of 190 miles per hour, unheard of at the time. The fact that it was driven by some of the world's best drivers, including British Formula One champions Mike Hawthorne and Sterling Moss, only increased the price. When compared side-by-side -side with other classic cars, the 1957 335S carried a hefty amount of additional pedigree, with a more extensive racing history, celebrity race drivers, and a well-documented past. Because of this, the 335S was in a unique position to see a world record sale price. The highly anticipated auction of a 1957 Ferrari 335S finally went down, and true to form, it fetched an incredible amount that surpassed what the auction house thought it would go for. Ford GT40 
As the first road car to be delivered from Ford's advanced vehicle factory in Slough, England to North America, a 1966 Ford GT40 MKI is truly one of a kind. This particular car has been used as a promotional GT40 for Ford North America, making it a rare gem and a piece of automotive history at the same time. Owned by the same family for over 40 years, the car has been carefully restored in a four-year-long project to bring its charisma back to life. The fantastic condition of the chassis and the original parts made the restoration process easier, while other pieces and materials were sourced to recreate the look and feel of the original as closely as possible. The result is impressive. After a brief stint as a test and evaluation car on the Ford test track, this example, dubbed P1028 initially, was promoted to the official Ford North American promotional GT40. The first stop on its promotional tour was at the 1966 12 Hours of Sebring in Florida. It was here that it was paraded around and parked in the pit lane, giving spectators a closer look at the car. It spent six months traveling around the United States before it was sent to Toronto, Canada, where it continued promotional outings. It's considered among the most significant road-going GT40s to date and underwent a comprehensive four-year restoration. Aston Martin DBR1 a legendary machine, the Aston Martin DBR1, is the first of an iconic run of race cars. The very same vehicle has just made headlines again, this time as the most expensive British car to ever sell at auction, when it fetched an astonishing $22.5 million. No doubt the sale of DBR1 just put a smile on the face of current Aston Martin owners, as it's a reminder of those epic mid-century days when Britain's best routinely took the checkered flag over its continental rivals. Prior to 1956, regulations insisted that competing cars had to be road legal. It was intended to stop manufacturers from building thinly disguised race cars and barely civilizing them for highway use. The road legal regulation was relaxed soon after, and Aston Martin embraced this new freedom to create the DBR1. Most notable was the back of the front wheel, well, was no longer left open. Instead, the DBR1 featured full bodywork with a large triangular vent on the side, a design trait that would become standard on all future Aston Martins. It is one of only three cars in the 1950s to win two championships in the same year. In addition, the six World Sports Car Championship victories were a record for any car in the 1950s. <laughs> and remained a record in the championship until surpassed by the Ferrari 250TR. Porsche 550A Spider The 1956 version of the Porsche 550 was known as the 550A. It gave Porsche its first overall win in a major sports racing event. The 1956 Targa Florio in Sicily, and only 40 units were made. Italian racing driver Umberto Maglioli was the surprise overall winner in a Porsche 550A Spider at what was then the world's longest standing and most difficult road race. The young Porsche company gained worldwide recognition with this victory, as it was the first time that a driver in a smaller class of racing vehicles managed to beat vehicles with a higher cylinder displacement. The driver not only outclassed the competition, but also assured the first overall victory for Porsche in the World Championship. This victory was made all the more surprising because of the fact that the Porsche 550A Spider only debuted 11 days before at a race in Germany. Maglioli completed the 450-mile route without changing drivers in a time of 7 hours and 54 minutes, and thanks to the reliability of his Porsche, only pulled into the pit stop to refuel. Ready for the absolute top vintage racing and road rallies or race events across the world, the 550A is one of the finest cars in existence, owning to its on-track success and preservation of the original factory specification. 1991 Ferrari 643 Introduced halfway through the 1991 season, the beautiful Ferrari 643's predecessor was the short-lived 642. The new engine produced 710 horsepower at a screaming 13,800 RPM and drove through a 7-speed semi-automatic gearbox, technology that Ferrari had pioneered two years earlier. The 643 made its debut in the French Grand Prix in July 1991. Following the 1991 season, the car was fully refurbished at the Maranello factory. 
and sold to a South African collector. He kept it until 2010 and had it maintained by two mechanics, who would travel to work on the car and periodically start its engine. It is said that the engine and gearbox have covered just 186 miles since being recommissioned. After being sold in 2016 to a German enthusiast, this car was treated to a full restoration. The transmission, suspension, and brakes were all overhauled, and the engine was painstakingly inspected and recommissioned. It subsequently took part in the 2020 Old Timer Grand Prix at the Nürburgring and is offered for sale with all of the technical equipment necessary to run it. The Ferrari is eligible for enjoyment in historic motor racing series such as Formula Legends 3.5 liter and Ignition GP. The 643 was one of the best looking Formula One cars of its era and its V12 engine made it one of the best sounding too. Ferrari La Ferrari Ferrari has a revered tradition of creating landmark, limited production supercars to commemorate heritage while reinforcing its identity as a boutique builder of nothing less than the most extraordinary sports cars money can buy. By the early 2010s, a new breed of hybrid electric hypercars from other manufacturers were challenging its status. Tapping the spirit of competition that had served it so well on the track for 65 years, Ferrari duly met this challenge with yet another limited production supercar, one that would dwarf its predecessor in power, technology, and scope. Unveiled in 2013, the new model was simply called La Ferrari. When the media and enthusiasts eventually dissected the performance numbers, design, and engineering, it was difficult to argue with the model's boastful name. Electronically deployed active aerodynamic elements and a rear spoiler continuously attenuate downforce from between 200 and 800 pounds to maintain the car's traction and composure at any speed. In total, the two powertrains combine for a head-spinning 949 horsepower and 663 pound-feet of torque, propelling the slippery LaFerrari to 60 miles per hour from a standstill in as little as 2.4 seconds. The quarter mile arrived in 9.7 seconds at 149.2 miles per hour, besting all of its competitors. Ferrari Enzo From his earliest days leading the Grand Prix to the final game-changing supercar launch shortly before his death, Enzo Ferrari was resolutely committed to creating world-beating machines. Fitting then, the car was built in his honor. The Ferrari Enzo would exemplify everything that had seen the brand grow from a boutique producer of sports racers to one of the most coveted and desirable badges in automotive history. The Enzo was created to push the envelope of road car performance, utilizing technology derived from the top flight of motorsport and otherworldly styling. Constructed from lightweight carbon fiber and aluminum, the Enzo's advanced chassis was clothed in composite bodywork styled and shaped by wind tunnel testing. Influenced by the firm's leading Grand Prix cars, the rackish nose struck a tone carried over to the rest of the coachwork. With subtle ground effect aerodynamics, at the Enzo's heart lay an all-new engine capable of producing a staggering 651 horsepower, greater than the output of any of its rivals. Like its top-of-the-range forebearers, the Enzo set a new benchmark for performance and design and due to production run that numbered just 400 examples, has since become one of the preeminent collector cars of the modern era. Torpedo Torer There are rare cars, and there are these, the Torpedo Torer. It's a Simplex, a US motor brand that only existed between 1906 and 1915. The last time a car from this manufacturer came to auction was in 2006. This particular model was sold to the highest bidder at a motor auction in Arizona last week and was bought for a staggering $4.85 million. That makes this 111-year-old vehicle officially the most expensive pre-First World War car of all time. The auction house's prized lot in 2023 was this vintage car, which obliterated its pre-sale estimate of $2.5 to $3.5 million. Not only is the Simplex a one-of-a-kind car, but it also has a famous former owner. The original keeper was Eleonora Randolph Sears, who is renowned as one of the finest American sporting figures of the first half of the 20th century, excelling in international tennis, squash, show jumping, golf, and a further 13 disciplines. She's also considered one of the first female motorists in the US and one of the first women to drive a racing car. The car features a massive 9.8-liter four-cylinder engine 
that typified the generation. This 50 horsepower model was the sportiest of all simplexes and was introduced to the public with a then breathtaking price tag of $5,700. That's the equivalent of over half a million dollars today. Ferrari 375mm In the 1950s, car racing was nowhere near what it has become today. The majority of the cars on the road circuits were more about how good the driver was and how well the car was turned. Having said that, there always has to be some sort of exception. And the exception here is the 1953 Ferrari 375mm Spider. The Ferrari managed to completely dominate the World Sports Car Championship between 1954 and 1957. Winning a total of 11 races and having 7 more podium appearances, top 3 or 4 places. It also won 2 national championships in Argentina in 1954 and 1955. In 1957, the car was retired following a crash. Post-retirement, someone managed to get a hold of this storied racer, pulled out the Italian V12 and dropped in a US-built V8 engine. Then the once-famed roadster just disappeared from automotive history. In 1983, this American-powered Ferrari resurfaced and made its way back home. In Italy, the new owner repaired the image of this car by reinstalling its Italian power plant and restoring it entirely. The car's beautiful and highly influential one-off coachwork would be immeasurably valuable, even without the chassis's notable competition pedigree. But the racing record and chain of ownership truly distinguish it. This 375mm is, bar none, a benchmark blue-chip Ferrari of the highest order, one whose availability is a singular once-in-a-lifetime event. Ferrari 290mm This Ferrari 290mm campaigned for the 1956 and 57 seasons was the headline car for a 2018 sale, and the Ferrari sold for $22,500,000 as the ninth highest price ever paid for a car at a public auction. The 12th car to sell for more than $20 million and the second most expensive car sold that year. This car was the last of four built by Ferrari and one of three to survive. It comes with a significant motorsport pedigree both as an official Ferrari works team car and as a private entry. This 290mm was piloted by an amazing assortment of factory team drivers in some of the most prestigious race events in the world. The 290mm was developed by Ferrari to contest the 1956 World Sports Car Championship and the Mille Miglia, hence the MM initials, and to reclaim dominance over past and present competitor Mercedes-Benz and its great domestic rival Maserati. For Enzo Ferrari, this was just as important as his efforts to win the Formula One World Championship. Upon the current owner's acquisition of the 290mm in 2011, it was decided that the car would be certified and fully restored. The next owner of this illustrious Ferrari will be afforded the opportunity to add their name to this incredible list as a driver in addition to acquiring one of the rarest and most significant Ferrari sports racing cars. Pagani Zonda R Pagani's creation initially shocked journalists with its distinctive organic lines, remarkable performance, and extraordinary build quality a combination of desirable traits which has since caused the Zonda to achieve a mythical status among the most discerning supercar collectors. In 2007, Pagani introduced their first track-focused model, the Zonda R, as the most fearsome and spartan distillation of the company's technological capabilities. The Zonda R is truly the brand's tour de force. Free from race and governmental regulations, the Zonda was designed to be the ultimate driver's car, offering the ultimate uncompromised driving experience. The suspension, geometry, powertrain and chassis structure and bodywork were specifically developed for the model. All told, the Zonda R is almost more of a bespoke creation in its own right than it is a road car modified for the track. With a fantastic power to weight ratio and lightning quick gear changes, the Zonda R sprints to 60 miles per hour in 2.7 seconds. Quite simply, it is truly a track weapon of the most ferocious variety. Since their earliest days, Pagani's offerings have always showcased bold designs, brilliant engineering, and sensational attention to detail, representing the finest craftsmanship offered in the automotive industry today. Mercedes-Benz 540K the Mercedes-Benz Special Roadster appealed to a global audience represented by a who's who of the international social and economic elite. Ownership of these cars was no doubt a source of pride, 
unlike any other special roadster. This car incorporates several important details such as fully skirted aerodynamic fenders and cut down doors which were a nod to the earlier road and competition oriented roadsters. Completely unique touches not employed on any other factory body include deleted running boards. With only a vestigial, sculpted frame cover remaining and a subtle arch on the tops of the fenders, which are mimicked along the rear of the body, imperceptibly hinting at a tail fin. As a late production car, it was equipped with a 5-speed transmission, providing flexibility for the road and ensuring it would be as much a pleasure to drive as to behold. Mercedes-Benz success aided by the continuing defaults of its sporting luxury competitors as the Great Depression worked its way through society, politics, royalty, and finance encouraged the introduction in 1936 of the 540K, regarded by many and respected by all as the high point of the classic era's great cars. The Mercedes-Benz 540K reflected the restless pursuit of perfection by Mercedes-Benz engineers, technicians, and craftsmen. Bugatti Chiron Profilier the one-off 2022 Bugatti Chiron Profilier sold for US $10.6 million, the highest price ever paid in a public auction for a new car, and also set the new Chiron model record. It is the second most expensive Bugatti ever in nominal terms, and only the fifth Bugatti ever to achieve over $10 million at a public auction. The Bugatti Chiron Profilier is one of only three 21st century cars to have achieved more than $10 million in a public auction. The car's cabin comes in a blue and gray color theme, and its seats, doors, and dashboard have an element of leather upholstery. Which is the first for any Chiron car. The car's shape and appearance is a hat tip to the uber-stylish teardrop shape design of the brand cars of the 1930s. The Profilier was developed as a less radical interpretation of the Chiron Per Sport, but as production slots for all 500 Bugattis were already filled before development was completed, only this one example was ever produced. This has all the salient features of pure sport from the Chiron collection, but with an enhanced top speed and an inbuilt capacity of reaching 186 miles per hour in 12.4 seconds. Interestingly, though Chiron Profilier is the most expensive car sold at an auction, the record for the most expensive car sold overall rests with a Bugatti that international footballer Cristiano Ronaldo paid over $18.7 million for in 2020. Bugatti Type 57 Think twice before washing and waxing that old vintage car in your grandfather's garage. Its faded paint and flat tires could be hiding a multi-million dollar gem. At least that was the case recently when an unrestored 1937 Bugatti Type 57S Alante Coupe sold for roughly $4.4 million at auction. The car was found in the garage of a doctor who died in 2007 and had not been driven in 50 years. A splotchy flat black paint job, sagging seats, and rusty wire wheels didn't deter bidders of this barn find Bugatti. In good running condition, a car like this one could be expected to top 120 miles an hour. But therein lies the problem for this car's new owner. The official selling price does not include the hundreds of thousands of dollars needed for a full restoration. Founded in 1909 in Molchim, France, the company made cars that were among the most advanced and expensive of their day. The brand was synonymous with racing victories and a worldwide who's who of wealthy clientele. The company managed to survive the Great Depression, World War II, coupled with the death of the company's founder in 1947, brought an end to the brand as they knew it. Of course, the brand's pre-existing fame did not stop the hype that is often used to excite potential buyers. It has been suggested that the 57S could break the record for the most expensive car ever sold at auction. Ferrari F50 Given the success and acclaim of Ferrari's F40, the 40th anniversary supercar that debuted in 1987, engineers recognized that an even more superlative model would be necessary to properly commemorate the automaker's soon to follow 50th anniversary. Enter the Ferrari F50. Four years of development was invested in a dedicated road car with characteristically strong ties to Ferrari's racing technologies. The designers outdid themselves with curvaceous coachwork modeled from carbon fiber, Kevlar, and Nomex honeycomb. 
Powell, eschewing the wedge motifs of the 1980s in favor of free-flowing lines that were evocative of the brand's most legendary sports racers of the 1950s and 1960s. A new naturally aspirated 4.7-liter V12 was dropped into this spectacular marriage of body and chassis in a mid-rear architecture that ensured optimal weight distribution and savings. To boot, the body included a solid removable top stored in an accompanying road case that allowed for the F50 to have the best of both worlds. Test drivers accelerated to 60 miles per hour from a standstill in just 3.6 seconds, while achieving a top speed of 202 miles per hour. Ferrari produced only 349 examples of the breathtaking F50 through the conclusion of production in 1998. The car is a bona fide collectible. Mercedes-Benz W196 Looking quite futuristic and space-age for its time, this beauty was a Formula One racing car produced for the 1954 and 1955 Formula One season. It just looks fast. It won 9 of 12 races entered and captured only two world championships, in which it competed. Interestingly, Mercedes withdrew from competitive racing and did not return for another three decades. And since then, however, this car has become iconic. And in 2013, a W196 was sold at the auction for over $20 million, which was a record fee at the time. The Mercedes-Benz W196 was designed by an engineer who has worked with Mercedes since the 1930s. Many new elements and technologies were used and this car was probably a step beyond its rivals. First included the use of desmodromic valves and mechanical direct fuel injection adapted from a high-performance engine used on a fighter jet during World War II. Plus, they designed two versions of this race car. The first one was streamlined for the faster tracks, while later Mercedes introduced a version with exposed wheels for the technically more demanding circuits. With 9 wins out of 12 Grand Prix wins, Mercedes-Benz and its W196 went into history as one of the finest cars in the early years of F1. Alfa Romeo 8C What in the mid-1930s passed for a sports car? The wealthy buyer's options were few and far between. Above all these was the Alfa Romeo 8C2900, whose lineage is part of a consistent and logical evolution stretching back to the 1920s, to the competition-oriented P3s, and the overwhelming race victories achieved in the early to mid-1930s by the 8C2300s. The newest version was not a mere sports car, but the most advanced modern and compelling sports car that money could buy. Each wheel carried independent suspension. Its straight 8 engine was two alloy banks of four cylinders, with not only dual overhead camshafts, but two Roots-type superchargers as well. As exciting and dramatic as the 2.9 chassis itself was, they benefited from the addition of some of the most sensuous and well-balanced coachwork of the pre-war era. The bodies were nearly perfect in their curvaceous proportions, and most notably their steeply raked windscreen and grille, with rear wheels often shaded by fitted spats, long-flowing, pontoon front fenders, and a rear end that appeared tucked between the fenders, visually exaggerating the great powerful length of the nose. The designer's usual attention to detail resulted in polished chrome here and there, an automobile classic. Then, as now, buying one places its owner in the foremost echelon of automotive enthusiasts. Ferrari 340 American Barchetta Assembly of this 340 American Barchetta began in 1951, with assembling the transaxle, closely followed by the assembly of the engine. The engine was then fitted to the completed chassis, noted for having a reinforced front leaf spring and it left the factory to be fitted with the elegant Barchetta coachwork. The Ferrari 340 America was the first model in the America series conceived with export in mind, and used as a means to increase Ferrari's footprint in the United States. It was made in very few numbers, on order from importers or customers. Barely 23 cars were completed between 1950 and 1952. American customers wanted less rugged interiors, bigger engines, and more performance. The first car of this lineage debuted in the 1950 Paris Motor Show in full racing trim. Granted, most Ferraris back then were as much race cars as they were road cars, but a customer could personalize his car to be more friendly on the road with softer suspension, different gearbox ratios, or new engine settings. It wouldn't be wrong to say that the early Ferrari sports cars were anything but flashy. 
That might sound like a strange statement to make if we look at how Ferrari designs have evolved since the 1950s. The understated styling of the 50s is appealing to many collectors, which is why the 340 America is a high bidder when it goes under the hammer at auction. We have to admit, we're a little vintage car obsessed after watching these videos. The stories behind these classic cars are as interesting as the designs themselves. So like and subscribe since you agree and stick around for more.